to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The scripture says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4. Today we want to welcome you to our study of the joy of Christianity. There is, Paul would say, or John would say in 2 and 3 John, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. The greatest joy in all the world is being a child of God. Stay with us as we're going to talk about why that's such a wonderful joy. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective Play Stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. Someone once said, way too many Christians look like they've been baptized in pickle juice. They've got a sour expression. They look like they're somebody run over their best dog or their, their best friend died. Friend of all the people in the world, Christians ought to have joy in Christ. Now, there's a book in the Bible that really illustrates this so beautifully, and it's the book of Philippians. And so I want to encourage you to open your Bible to the book of Philippians as we're going to think today about the joy that every child of God ought to have. Now, if there were ever anybody as it relates to the background of the book of Philippians, if there were ever anybody who might have a reason to be discouraged or downtrodden, well, it could very well be the Apostle Paul. In Acts 16, 25, as he is in Philippi, he is placed in prison for preaching the gospel and for casting a, a, a demon out of a woman, and he's there in prison. And what's he doing? Acts 16, 25, Paul and Silas in prison, deep, dark dungeon in Philippi. They're praying and they're singing hymns to God and the prisoners are listening to them. My friend, the book of Philippians, more than any book, tells us how to have the joy of Christianity. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, verse 12 says that the word of God is living and powerful. That means it's, it's, it's practical and it's relevant. 
And my friend, today's lesson is so practical as we think about this idea. One of the key ideas or key verses in the book of Philippians is chapter 4, verse 4, which we mentioned at the outset. Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. It's like, I want to tell you this, and so that you get it, I want to emphasize it again. Have joy as a child of God. Paul would say to these Philippians, you are my crown and joy. So the key word in the book, joy, occurs some 16 times in this short four-chapter book. It's an overriding idea that Paul's trying to get out. Now, let me tell you just a little bit of the background to the book of Philippians, and then we'll look at four ways in this book that a, true, that a true Christian can have joy in Christ. The background is this. In Acts chapter 16, Paul has the mindset that he's going to continue and go back to some of the places he's already been on his missionary journeys, but the Holy Spirit intercedes. And God didn't allow that. Instead, in a vision, he saw a man of Macedonia pleading with Paul, calling out to him, come over and help us also. And so Paul took that as an initiative to go to the region of Macedonia. Chief city in Macedonia and region would be Philippi. And so Paul goes to Philippi. When he gets there, as is usually his custom, he looks for religious people in religious places. And so he finds out that prayer is customarily being made by a river there. And when he goes there, he finds Lydia, finds others, her household. Their heart is receptive to the gospel. But then also in Philippi, there's this young woman who is possessed by an unclean spirit. She kind of follows Paul and Silas around for a little while until basically they get fed up with that. And Paul, in fact, that demon will say, these men are servants of the high, most high God. And Paul doesn't want a demon advertising for him. So eventually he casts that demon out. But people were taking advantage of this woman and her demon possession, and they were using her, and they were promoting false religion with it, and so their, their way of living kind of ceased to exist when this demon is cast out. So they put Paul in jail. He's in prison there. In the prison, he comes in contact with what we know of as the Philippian jailer, and one of the greatest questions ever asked comes, what must I do to be saved? But in that background, and to that group of people, Paul writes about the joy of Christianity. My friend, here's the practical and relevant side of what we're talking about today. How do I have joy in a world that is filled with problems? And I've got problems, you do as well in your life from time to time, in a world where sin is rampant, where evil exists, where people don't treat other people like they ought to be treated, where the devil is, is active and trying to tempt us. In that scenario, how do we find joy? Same way they did. I want to give you four stepping stones in the book of Philippians that tell us how to have true joy in Christ. Number one. To have joy in Christ, Christ must be the purpose of your life. Look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. Listen to Paul's mindset. Christ must be the purpose of life to have real joy. Paul says, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, this tells us a little bit about why in that dungeon in Philippi, Paul was praying and singing hymns to God. For him, living was all about Christ. And if he died right there in that prison, that was a plus. Friend, for us to have this mindset, for Christ to be the purpose of our life, just like he was the Apostle Paul's, there are several things we have to think through and make decisions about. First, Christ, I've got a, this requires that I have complete devotion to the Lord, half half-hearted devotion. Partial Christianity, 60% for the Lord and 40% for the world, one foot in the church and one foot, of, that won't cut it. You'll Listen to me. You will never have Christ as your purpose and you'll never have real happiness. Some of the most miserable people in all the world are half committed people. 
To make this happen, I've got to have complete devotion to the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15, Paul says, We judge thus, that if Christ died for all, then all died, and He died for all, that they who live should no longer live for themselves, but live for Christ who died for them and rose again. Do, do you not know, Paul says, that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, whom you have from God? Listen now. You are not your own. What do you mean I'm not my own? You were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are His. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. Paul would say, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live. Galatians, Galatians 2.20, Jesus said, take up your cross daily and follow me. Friend, if Christ is going to be your purpose in life, you have got to have nothing less than 100% devotion to the Lord. Now again, am I saying that I'm perfect and you're perfect and we're never going to make mistakes and that devotion, that's not the idea. But my mindset and my dedication is I want to do my best to give everything to Almighty God, for Christ to be the purpose of life, I've got to realize what my true purpose in life is all about. Why are you here? Why did God create you? Why were you put on this earth? Why, why did God allow you to live? Isaiah 43 verse 7 gives us the answer to that. God says, everyone who is called by my name, listen now, who I created for my glory. I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. My life is to honor and magnify God and do as much good as I can. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, whether we eat or whether we drink or whatever we do, we do all to the glory of God. And do you remember that book in the Bible? where the meaning of life is the whole theme of the book, the book of Ecclesiastes. Solomon tries everything. Building projects, lust of the flesh, musical composition, whatever it is, gardening, whatever you want to think of. In that book, he tries everything to find meaning and purpose of life. And all of it is vanity and like trying to catch the wind until he realizes one point. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What is life all about? Here it is. Fear God. Keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Friend, if Christ is going to be the purpose of my life, I've got to realize what my purpose is all about. That I'm here to honor and glorify God in everything that I say and do. And friend, that means that as a child of God, I've got to recognize Jesus' authority in my life, that he has all authority in heaven and on earth, Matthew 28, 18. I I've got to let Jesus be the Lord of my life. Acts 2, verse 36 Kind of the key idea in Peter's sermon, Peter said, Therefore let all the house of Israel know that this Jesus is both Lord and Christ. Lord means master, owner, one who is over that. Friend, Jesus has got to be Lord. He's got to be the owner of my life. I've got to be willing to obey him in everything that I do. Luke 6, 46, Jesus said to the Jewish elite, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? It's not everybody that looks up in heaven and says, Lord, that's going there, but he who does the will of my Father, Jesus said. Luke 6, 46, Matthew chapter 7, verse number 21. And my friend, if, if, if that's our purpose, if Christ, if my purpose is to live for Christ, like Paul, you can say, death's not a bad thing. Revelation 14, verse 13, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And so the first major key for true happiness is Christ must be the purpose of your life. Secondly, Christ 
must be the pattern or the person of your life. Notice Philippians chapter 2, and I want you to hear what Paul says, verses 3 through 5. Paul says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind, this selfless mind, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the death, even the death of the cross. Where's happiness found? Happiness is not found in selfish pursuits. Happiness is not found in fulfilling every desire. What happens when you fulfill every pursuit and you have tried every fleshly desire? Then what? Happiness is not a found in the amount of stuff you can amass. You can have it all and you still want more. Selflessness, the selfless mind of Jesus is the pattern to true happiness. You see, the mind of Christ is definitely a mind that puts others first. Mark 10 verse 45, the Bible says, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus' mindset, was, his whole mindset was, I didn't come here for myself. I didn't come here to be served, even though he was God and he deserved that. His whole selfless mindset was, I've come to serve others. And friend, when you think about that, I want you to think real carefully about that idea. And I want you to think about it as it relates to some of the only words of Jesus not found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John or in the first little bit of Revelation. Those words are found in Acts chapter 20, verse number 35. Notice what the Bible says. Paul says, and you remember the words of the Lord Jesus who said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Sometimes it seems like there's a society, always a society with its hand out, looking for everybody to give, never think they've got enough. Jesus said that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. You want to find true happiness? Give yourself to something else than selfishness. Give yourself to the cause of God. Try every day to live a life that honors God and does good, do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. Galatians 6, verses 9 through 10. Uh, pure and undefiled religion in its purest form is to visit the widows and the orphans in their affliction and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. You want to have happiness and joy beyond measure? Stop making life about yourself and live for something bigger. Be selfless. Do good to others. Give your life to God. My friend, that's a life where true joy and happiness can be found. Let's talk about the third stepping stone to true, true joy. Not only must Christ be the purpose of life, and Christ's selfless pattern must be the pattern of my life, Christ must be the prize of life. You think about a prize. Maybe you think about it as a kid. Uh, you, when I was a kid, we'd get a box of cereal, and in the bottom of that box, there'd be a prize. And it was some cheap, worthless gadget. But boy, to get to that prize was the best thing ever. Get a prize, used to get a prize and a Happy Meal, as it were. And that was so exciting. What's the prize in life? What's the joy? What's the crown? What are you looking to get out of life? Look at Philippians chapter 3, and I want you to notice what Paul's prize was in verses 12 through 14. Paul says, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, listen to this, I press toward the goal to the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. What was Paul's prize? The upward call of God. 
the prize of one day living with God forever. But before we really focus too much on that prize, I want you to see in context there are some things necessary you've got to do before that can prize. That prize can really be what you're focused on. We've got to, first of all, forget who we were before Christ. Listen to what Paul says. Not that I'm already attained or already perfected. Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind. Friend, the worst thing you can do to create in your life, pain and agony and, and sadness is to live in the past. Someone has once said, those who live in the past are doomed to repeat its mistakes. Paul said, you got to forget about who you were before Christ. And he could definitely say that, right? He would say in 1 Timothy 1, formerly I was a, a blasphemer, injurious to, to the cause of Christ. He was there in Acts 6 and 7, holding the coats of those who stoned Stephen. Acts 8, he was like a wrecking ball. He wreaked havoc on the church. And yet Paul said, you've got to forget who you were before you came to Jesus. Secondly, don't ever, ever think you've arrived. Not that I am perfected. Not that I've already attained. Paul would say, I'm not there yet. Friend, if I think I've arrived as a Christian, the devil's got me right where he wants me. Christianity is a continual growth process. Grow. That word is continual. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. And then you've got to put the sinful past behind you. Forgetting those things which are behind, Paul then would say, we reach forward to those things which are ahead, to the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now, let's think about that prize. Let's think about the joy it creates in our hearts and lives. In Colossians 3 verse 1, Paul says, If then you are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Do not set your mind on things below, but on things above is the idea. Friend, the prize is to look up and to realize this old temporary world that is filled with evil and sin and hatred, it's not what it's all about. The prize is being in heaven where God is. You know what I think the greatest verse about heaven is? It's, it's not one you would think of. It's not streets of gold, it's not pearly gates, it's not walls of jasper. Matthew 6, 9 is the greatest thing about heaven. Jesus said, pray, our Father who art in heaven. What's the prize? Being with God, being with Christ forever, living in a place where evil and sin do not habitate and do not live in, being with loved ones who've gone on before. Here's kind of the idea. Any runner in a long distance race, especially a really long distance race, if you're gonna finish that race, you can't look down at your shoes and you can't look in the, in the ditch at what's going on beside you. To finish the race, you've gotta find a focal point out in the distance, up ahead, to stay focused on because when it hurts and when you feel like giving up and until you catch that second wind, you've gotta have something up ahead to look at. That's the idea of Christianity. If you wanna have real joy, look up. God will help us with that. Number four, fourth stepping stone to true happiness. Not only is Christ the purpose, Christ is the pattern, Christ is the prize. Thank God, Christ is also the power of my life. Look in your Bible in Philippians chapter four, verse number 13 with me. How do you have true joy? Realize where the power comes from. Philippians four, verse number 13. The apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, notice what Paul did not say. Paul did not say, and leave the sentence, put the period here. Paul did not say, I can do all things, period. Not the way it works. That's sometimes how we think, especially some of us men. We think we've got it figured out. We know the plan. We know how all this is going to work out, and we've got it figured out. It's not what Paul said. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My friend, when I think I got, got it all figured out and I can do it all myself, it usually doesn't work out real good. Hebrews 13 verses five through six says, this is what we need to do. Let your life be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Well, why? 
the Lord himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? When I realize it's not about me, it's not about where I live, it's not about security systems, it's not about military might, it's not about who's in power or who's in control or who isn't. When I realize that Jesus Christ is the true source of power, that's when life changes and joy sets in. Let me illustrate that for you. So the scene is this in Mark chapter 4 and 5. Jesus, the, the, Jesus stayed up on the mountain, and he sent the disciples out into the ocean. And when they get out there in the middle of the night, without any light, probably, not much anyway if they had any, a storm rises, and the water become, begins to get in the boat, and it's filling up, and it looks like they're going to drown. And so at one point, Jesus comes walking to them. On another occasion, Jesus is in the boat, asleep on a pillow in the stern. And they wake him up and they say, Lord, do you not care that we're about to perish? Look, the boat's filling up. We can't bail it quick enough. Waves are getting higher. We ain't got enough life jackets. We're all about to drown out here. And Jesus said, peace, be still. And it was like a sea of glass. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be? that even the, way, the wind and the waves obey him. What was that point all about? Friend, that was done by Jesus to help them see when calamity rises, when everything looks like it's sinking around you, when, when problems are there, remember, Jesus has the ability to calm those. The only power and calming source in my life and yours is the Lord Jesus Christ. When I realize that, then I'm going to have true happiness. And so if you've never obeyed the gospel, friend, we hope you'll contact us. We'd love to talk to you more about being a Christian. And if you are a Christian, friend, keep living for Jesus. Have joy. Have the joy that you ought to have, and that impacts other people. Join us next time as we study more from God's divine word. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.